We have two kinds of stairs that we can create in Revit. We have sketch-based stairs and component-based stairs. In this movie, I'd like to explore how we can create sketch-based stairs, and in a future movie, we'll look at component-based stairs. So to get started, I'm going to zoom in around this space down here in the lower portion of the plan. You can see it's labeled stair A, and we're going to put a stair in this general location. To get started, we go to the Architecture tab. And on the circulation panel, we're going to click the drop down next to the stair button and choose stair by sketch. When I select that command, it will take me into sketch mode. My model canvas will turn gray. I'll get the green tinted ribbon and a variety of sketch buttons up on the ribbon. The default button is run. What this means is I'll be creating the individual run of stairs. It'll create the risers, the treads, everything when I click two points. Now, how it does that is determined by whatever type you have designated over here. I have 7-inch max riser and 11-inch tread selected. And if we click Edit Type, all that means is it will default to an 11-inch deep tread, and it will default to a 7-inch riser, or maximum 7-inch riser. And what that actually means is it'll get as close to 7 inches as possible without exceeding it. So it might be 6 and a little bit, but it'll never be 7 or more. Now there's some other settings in here as well, and you can look through these on your own, but I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. And then how does it know how many treads and risers you need? Well, that's determined by the constraints. So it starts at a base level of whatever floor plan you're currently in. I'm in the level two floor plan, so my stair is going to start at level two. Then it assumes that the top level for the stair, you want to go to the level above that. So mine is going to go up to level three. In cases where you need to do something custom beyond that, you can do a base or a top offset, positive or negative number, to go above or below those levels. If I scroll down a little bit, the width of the stair is here. Now you can change it later, but I find with sketch-based stairs, it's a little bit easier if you change it before you start to sketch. So for this particular stair, I'm going to set the width to four feet. The desired number of risers comes next, and that will be determined from doing the math based on your floor-to-floor -floor height here and your maximum riser height and you could see that it came up with an actual riser height of just shy of seven inches. So as we mentioned before, it'll get as close to seven as it can without going over. Now, if I change this number to something fewer than 18 and apply it, I'll get an error. And it will tell me that that number is too small because I've exceeded the maximum riser height. If I do a bigger number, it will just simply recompute the actual riser height. So I could do more risers, but I wouldn't be able to do fewer in this case. I'm going to set it back to 18. So now the next thing is I usually like to draw my stair away from where I need it, and then I move it into position. I find that a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is just find a point in the middle of this space and click. Then I'm going to slowly move my mouse down in the vertical direction. And notice that right beneath my cursor, there's a small gray message that says 10 risers created, 8 remaining. I'm going to move that back slightly so that it says 9 created and 9 remaining. And when it does, I'm going to click to place my second point. Now, remember that you're using the run tool here. So all you need to do is place runs. Revit will handle the rest, meaning that if I move over here, lined up with the last point that I clicked, click again, and then start moving in the opposite direction vertically until I run out of risers. So notice that the message now says 18 risers created, zero remaining, and I'll click. Notice that in addition to giving me the second run, Revit also created the landing. So you don't have to worry about drawing the landing objects, just draw the runs and Revit will fill in the rest. Now these green edges are the boundary lines. These black edges are the riser lines. This blue edge is the path. So you can manipulate these objects if necessary, but usually the run tool is the most convenient way to draw all of those pieces. Now what I'm going to do is make a window selection around the entire sketch, go to my move command, snap right to this endpoint, and then move it till it snaps to 
this endpoint right here. Now I want to make sure it's giving me the endpoint, so I'm going to type SE to snap directly to that endpoint and then click. So you notice that gives me a small offset off of the edge right here. Now what I want to do is move this side only so that it gives me a similar offset off of this inside wall. So to do that, I'm going to click right here below the stair A label, drag and surround only the right hand side of the sketch. Now I could use the move command again, and if you do, the objects will stay attached. Notice the green lines will stretch accordingly when you use your move command. However, the problem is I don't know how far to move. Therefore, if you look up on your options bar, what I'm going to do instead is click the activate dimensions button. This will apply temporary dimensions at several convenient locations. And the one that I want to modify is this one right here, which measures it off of that right hand wall. And I'll put in the distance I want, which is four inches in this case. That will move that run over and stretch the landing accordingly. Now you can manipulate the rest of the sketch in a similar fashion. So if I wanted this landing to be a little bit larger than it currently is, I can select this landing line. I'm going to grab this grip and drag it and snap it right there. So the landing is currently four feet. Maybe I want it to be five feet. So that gives you an idea of some of the things you can start to do while you're here in this sketch mode. Now, before I finish, the one last thing I want to do in this sketch is over here on the far right is the railing button. When you create stairs, Revit typically also creates a railing for you. In fact, it creates two railings, one on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the kind of railing I want. I'm going to choose a guardrail pipe, and I'm going to apply that railing to the stringers. And then I'm going to click OK, and then Finish. Now, when I do that, a small message will appear down at the bottom about the railing. It's telling me that it's a little bit tight in here, essentially, is what it's saying. Now, this is one of those yellow tinted warnings, and I can just click anywhere to ignore it. In a future movie, we're going to look at that condition more carefully and talk about ways to fix it. But in this case, I am going to ignore it and just continue on with the stair. So now I'd like to see what this stair looks like, and this section view here will do a good job at that. So I'm going to select that section, right click, and choose Go to View. Then I'll zoom in and take a look at the stair that we just created. And as you can see, it starts here on level two and it goes up to level three. And there are the railings that were created as well. Now, clearly I need another stair to get from the first floor up to the second floor. So let me go back down to my level one floor plan, zoom in a little bit closer on this lobby area. And this lobby is a little bit longer. So I might be able to get away with a single straight run of stairs this time. So let me go back to my sketch base stair. I'm going to check my settings. I'm going from level one to level two, which is fine. I'm four feet again, because it remembered that that's what I did last time. And it's giving me 18 risers again, which is fine. I'm going to start anywhere, maybe right here and pull straight up until I'm going perfectly vertically until it's used all 18 risers. So it should say 18 created, zero remaining, and then I will click. Click my Modify tool, select my sketch, activate my dimensions, and then edit the dimension to move this closer to the wall, and I'll use that 4-inch dimension again. I'll come over here to the Modify, Create Stairs Sketch tab, click Finish, and that will create the stair and the two railings, and then go back to the Section at Stairs section, and you can see it right there. Now notice that it's a little bit too far to the right, so what I'm going to do is first move it randomly, like so. Then I'll zoom in in this location right here, and then move it a little bit more precisely to snap directly to the slab there. So creating sketch-based stairs is as simple as creating any other sketch-based object. You go into sketch mode, you typically work in plan, and you sketch out the shape of the stair that you want. And when you click finish, it will create the stair based on the rules that are built in the type properties, which includes the proportions of the risers and the treads. And it will give you the stair and an accompanying set of railings.